You said three yeah. minutes. Yes, we're going to go. Um, there's, uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. My name is Shannon Libby. I'm the youth advisor for the Franklin Youth Initiative. I'm also a health teacher at Franklin High School. Um, the U Franklin Youth Initiative, FYI, is um, in working with the Franklin Mayor's Drug Task Force. And I'm going to speak briefly just as a health teacher, having worked in Franklin for five years, um, in opposi opposition to this bill. Um, decriminalizing marijuana is sending a message that it is, is, is quote unquote, a safe drug. Um, my experience in working at that high school as both a crisis counselor and a health teacher is that it, once you decriminalize it, um, ch students, kids, teenagers um, lose that little bit of fear of what's going to happen if I, if I take that next step. We witness regularly issues with teenagers and alcohol. And alcohol also falls under that, that, that area from when the kids are 21 until you know, 16, 17, kids as young as 15 that are drinking. And how do you get them help? The reality is sometimes there's just not services in place. Um, budgets have been cut. Services aren't there to be able to provide um, what is necessary. And prevention, maintaining this as a misdemeanor, kind of is that first step in preventing kids from taking that step. Brains are growing until the age 21. Puberty officially ends at 21. Teach that in my health class. So their brain is developing. So decriminalizing it, making it a violation versus a misdemeanor, is inviting kids into to saying, OK, well, I speed in my car and I get a slap on our wrist. So what's going to happen when we pick up a joint? Um, I also would like to introduce uh, Megan Corning. She's one of um, my students and a mem our vi actually our president of Franklin Youth. And she has a statement that she would like to read. Um, I am a junior at Franklin High School and also president of the Franklin Youth Initiative. And I personally believe that the penalties do fit the nature of the crime. And that's because I know, and I'm sure a lot of you in this room know, that teenagers think that they are invisible. They're invincible. And they don't, the fear that keeps them from doing something is not what's going to happen to their bodies. It's punishment from their parents, prison, because teenagers will do anything as long as they can't see the harm. And teenagers can't see what's going on inside their bodies. And I wish all of you could spend a day at Franklin High School and you wouldn't know what I mean because I'm on the bus head to school and I see at least five teenagers every morning either smoking cigarettes or whatever it is they're smoking. I see them sneak behind restaurants to buy, to sell, or to use. And the reason that I'm opposed to this bill is because if you've seen the things that I've seen, I don't classify it as a violation. I think it is a crime. I have lost people that are very close to my family because they do stupid things while they're high on marijuana. And they weren't under the influence of any other drug. And because there are drugs like meth and cocaine and heroin, they think that marijuana is OK because it's not as bad in comparison. And that may be true, but it is still very harmful to you. And teenagers don't understand that because they believe that they are invincible. And the damage that's going to do their body, I know no matter what the law is, the effects of marijuana is still going to be the same. And that's not going to change who uses and who doesn't. It's the fear of what's going to be the punishment of their actions. Thank you. Hey, anyone standing up behind you and one of you used to, to add? To the testimony? Okay. Any questions? They're or? shy. <laughs> this is the one. first time for them <laughs> here. This is, this, this is nice to see. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this man is the sponsor of the bill. <laughs> okay, who is next on the list? Representative Ginsburg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, would you feel more comfortable if, first of all, the uh, age at which, uh, below which it's required to send a person to a treatment program were raised to 21? Um, I'm not comfortable with the decriminalization, um, whether it's 21 or 18, because the programs for treatment are just not there. Um, I've had many people that are 21 that I have, that have since graduated and have come back that may or may not have 
you know, had an issue that have troubles because in a, in a community like Franklin, when it, where a lot is rural, the closest treatment that you can get is in Laconia. And when you're in, you know, a low income, you know, generational poverty town, transportation is a huge piece. So getting the transportation to go from Franklin to Laconia is, is difficult. It creates a hardship. Um, I noticed that in this bill, it talks greatly about treatment programs. I think if you're, you know, you're looking at decriminalizing something, you're looking at saying it's just a violation. Speeding's a violation. So I'm, I, I guess where, you know, whether the age is 18 or 21, that's up for you guys. As a teacher, as a mom, I have two teenagers, as the ad advocate for these guys here, I, I just think it should stay as a misdemeanor. Can I follow up? Yeah. Yes. Um, do you teach that uh, using alcohol is more or less dangerous than marijuana? I teach the use of alcohol and marijuana as equally dangerous. Um, when I present the, we call it the ATOD section of the health curriculum, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, we teach that the actual facts, the physical effects of what marijuana and alcohol will do to your brain, what it will both do to your body. Um, <coughs> because alcohol is legal at age 21, I teach to the kids that you shouldn't drink it because your brain, you know, you shouldn't consume it. Your brain is developing, your body is developing, and studies show it starts takes full seven years to become an adult from the time you start puberty. Um, so when I teach, I don't know if I'm answering this correctly, but when I teach it, I teach that both of them are dangerous and that they're both going to affect your brain development, it's going to affect your liver development. I teach it the same way. You're welcome. And I have, we brought um, some paperwork to, that talks about the effects of marijuana on the body and on teenagers. So for everyone to look at. Representative Antos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking my question. You're welcome. Um, would you believe that anyone within this committee or on the House floor, no matter what law passes to make something legal or illegal, it will still be used by a person's choice, whether it's legal or not? Do you, do you think that if this was to be decriminalized, that things would change? I do believe things would change. Um, because of my experiences as a, a teacher in Franklin and working with teenagers, I get the big debate, the big question all the time about, well, it should be decriminalized. In fact, that's one of the things that we do in class as a debate. You break up the class and they make an argument. One side is for and one side is against. Um, I, I do honestly believe that things would change and I think they would change greatly because the, the image that marijuana is a misdemeanor versus marijuana is an offense or a violation are two drastically different things in a teenager's mind because of the way that they think and that they process. Um, so the ones that are not using right now because it's a misdemeanor and you could go to jail and you could get a big fine, those kids will probably step back a little bit and say, well, it's like getting a speeding ticket and well, that's not as bad, so they're more likely to probably to try it. Um, and I've had conversations with kids where they're like, I will never do it because it's not good for you. And then I've had some that said, well, maybe if it wasn't uh, you know, illegal, then you know, I might try it. So I think as you take those steps and you, you, know, you turn it into a violation, that, that you, yeah, you will see a change. Most teenagers have a curiosity to at least try something, whether they see it around them or see it, their parents using it. But from my personal experiences, what's keeping me from trying it is I know the effects it can do on your body, but the main thing for me is fear of punishment from my parents. Well, what happened to me if I got caught? And I feel like that is the same for the other members in this group. And if the punishment, which is the fear that keeps a lot of people from having that curiosity, if that was lowered, it would greatly change the mindset of my youth. <coughs> Yes, I don't have a question. I would just like to thank the teacher for bringing it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And I'd like to thank the young lady. She's been very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> and the young, young man as well. <laughs> <laughs> or one young man. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah, thank you. 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 fearful of what your parents might say or do, 
Is that fear greater than the fear of the law? You fear the law more than you fear your parents? I have a follow-up. Okay. For, the, for the teacher. Yes. Now, let's say that one of the children behind you made the choice to partake, and they were caught. Should they have the opportunity to go on to college? Um, my understanding with the way that the financial aid works is that um, if they, if you are caught in possession, the, the drug and alcohol component to that is that it allows for the kids to go through treatment before they are then able to go ahead and process the applications and, and get financial aid. Yes. And if they had a subsequent incident and they were banned from seeking uh, financial assistance to go to college, they would then basically destroy the rest of their life by not being able to seek the education that they were initially trying to find. Is that, uh, is that the case? Um, according to my understanding of the financial aid regulations, that that is, is what they have in place. I think um, there are consequences for actions, natural consequences, and if you violate the law, that is the natural consequence um, as far as financial aid goes. So, Thank you. you're welcome. Do you have written testimony? Uh, we have some. May I just add something? Yes, you have a comment. A lot of people may think that we are just kids and we don't really know what we're talking about, but this is what we have to grow up in. Two of us are Tilton Police Explorers and we do what officers do. And it's very hard when we have kids saying, oh, can you hold my pot? Can you hold my cigarette? We have to grow up in this environment, all of us. And this soon, 20 years down the road, we're going to be. This is what our generation is. We need to make a living. We can't have marijuana being legal. This is just a step towards it being legal, and it's just, it's not going to work. It's just a violation. Mm -hmm. The reason that I'm more terrified of the law than my parents is because I know that a couple of years down the road, I'm almost to the point where I'm graduating high school, and I can have the choice whether I speak to my parents again. But the law can determine what I do with the rest of my life. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do believe that there has been a generation that went through the same process with alcohol. Is that for any of us, Dan? For me? Um, uh, a gen Sorry, I didn't directly uh, That's okay. Um, uh, the al uh, there was I know that there was issues with the alcohol. I know that the drinking age for alcohol was 18 and then it was 21. I know back in the 1920s there was the, the era of prohibition. Um, and having not lived during that time, having experience you know, from history, having been a teenager a <laughs> long time ago, but mainly working with teenagers, I, I see the issues with alcohol. I see the issues that teenagers and the accessibility for teenagers that get alcohol um, and with the change in the Chins laws, how it's di more difficult for the police to be able to get those kids help if they're caught in possession. Um, my, my, one of my fears with this bill is if you create a, um, turn this into a violation, you're adding another substance that is going to be more difficult to get help for kids. So. One more? Yes, thank you. We've heard that, and, and I would address this to any of you who care to answer, and, and, and you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard that uh, getting marijuana in a high school in New Hampshire, an illegal substance, is easier than getting cigarettes or beer, which are, are uh, regulated. Is that your experience? Um, my experience with being a teacher, um, I don't know about the students, I know that Kids getting cigarettes. Kids getting <laughs> kids getting cigarettes is easier. Um, do drug deals happen in school bathrooms? Yes, they do. Um, I think you'll see an increase in that if this becomes a, a violation instead of a misdemeanor. Um, accessibility is a problem, I think, for tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana, as well as prescription drugs. Thank you. Would any of you give answers? Are you to the chair, please? Do you have a question? Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to redirect the question to the rest of the board. Same question to any of the others. Okay. I apologize. Okay. I feel like students, if they want something, they know how to get it, and they will go to any extent to receive it. I have actually witnessed 
a transaction of cigarettes during my class in school right in front of me while I was in my Tilton Police Explorer uniform. And you can walk into the bathrooms at school and you can smell cigarette smoke when you go a fair way. If you have a towel from washing your hands, you can find butts in the trash in the school. So I feel like there's just unlimited ways to access it. There's also a nickname for when you text. For I know for cocaine, it's you say, do you have any Smitty? And that's how people know. So it's and cocaine. It's cocaine. Yeah, I don't know any other nicknames for other things, but I'm sure they're out there. Any further questions? We'll take that testimony if you give the representative. Okay, great. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Great job. Thank you. Um, the whole package? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.